Okay, well, I think we might get started as people are coming in. And I would like to welcome you all to our 10th AVID Summer Institute Digital XP. Uh, first time to present Summer Institute in its digital online version. So mm -hmm. thank you all for being here. The agenda slide gives you a sense of what's happening for the next half an hour. And it is my pleasure to introduce Professor Adam Shoemaker, who is the Vice Chancellor and President of Victoria University. Prior to his current appointment, he was the Vice Chancellor of Southern Cross University and has held senior leadership roles at a number of other Australian universities. He is one of Australia's leading researchers in the area of Indigenous literature and culture. Adam has a compelling vision for the future of the EU. And what makes me very excited about that vision is that he sees the link of lifelong learning stretching back into primary and secondary schools and connecting the, that progression of learning seamlessly from primary schools and early childhood through to university, vocational education, higher education, and coming in and out of education as you need it. Uh, we also have Professor Andrew Smallridge, who is the Dean of our award-winning first year college, who will speak to you later, and our wonderful student keynote speaker, who I'll get to introduce you to a little later. So for now, I hand it over to Adam to welcome you all. Oh, Claire, look, thank you so much, and, and colleagues from everywhere. I want to begin, as we are privileged to do, by acknowledging country. We're on different countries and different nations. Where I'm speaking from, standing from, if you like, is the Woiwurrung Nation of the Kulin, the traditional owners and custodians of university land in what is known as Footscray in Melbourne, for those who might know the regions of this city. And I want to not just acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians and their elders and wisdom, but all those, wherever you may be, those nations throughout Australia, and of course, First Nations people in North America. I understand we have participants, more than 200 from around Australia, from over 34 schools, and also our participants from the United States as well. Wherever you may be in those nations, prior nations existed and we honor them. And we honor the knowledge too for teaching and learning, which is part of what we do. I also want to pay special tribute to our student keynote speaker, Claire Bugden, and to, I know she's in year nine at uh, Logan Lee State High School in Queensland, and I've spoken with her just recently, and her teacher, Lauren Fletcher. Uh, it was an absolute privilege because I know that school, and when I was um, academic provost at Griffith University, I visited, visited it twice, and uh, so I know it to be a great school in many ways, and now I know it to be an avid school as well. So just comments uh, a bit at the beginning, colleagues. The world really needs help as you know, and we're trying to help it. Uh, we're a university that says we care and we act, but the whole country needs to do the same. And especially we pay tribute to the healthcare professions, everyone on front lines, no matter what it could be, borders, hospitals, cleaners, drivers, everyone, supermarket fillers. I mean, the last two years has been an incredible challenge, no matter where we've been. And we have a lot of people to thank. But at this university, we too thank everyone who's developed a very unusual model of learning and teaching into which and with which the AVID program has sat very comfortably. It's a resourceful and creative model. It's called simply the VU block model. And you may not know the history of this, but of course it goes back in its genesis more than 50 years to Colorado College in the United States and elsewhere. But it's the idea of doing one subject, one area at a time, superlatively well, assessing and moving on. And I think that mission of changing things for the better, and Andrew, of course, small, Andrew Smallwich will be speaking about this more in his talk, also links us to AVID because we're working closely therefore with schools and we actually have a proposal in front of government, both federal and state, to create uh, an experiment of block models in year seven and eight in high schools. So if that's successful, that bid will be back in touch with you, I can tell you. And we do think that it could be very, very helpful for those at a, an era and an area and an age of time where many things can go wrong in education, but a lot could go right with an intensive group-based support mechanism, mechanism like the block and of course, AVID itself. Now, while other universities typically teach in semesters with end-stocked high-stakes exams, as I said before, we do one thing at a time. And the model has been 
really successful. It's in its fifth year, and we've just seen the results. And I'll just give you a bit of a sense of it because you're all interested in pedagogy. It's not just the timetable, it's, it's the learning. It's the approach to assessment. It's the approach to personalization of learning. One instructor, one teacher, one lecturer with a set group of about 30, around 11 hours a week. And I don't want to say too much because I know Andrew's territory will cover it. But the results have been incredibly transformative, especially for those from non-English speaking backgrounds and other areas where people have not studied at the tertiary level before. So what you might describe it is first generation students at Free University, or sometimes it's called first in family students, have benefited even more than others. And we're seeing a remarkable uplift and a remarkable sense of employability skills. Indeed, it's now the case that this university was ranked number one in Australia for employability skills by a, a large survey of employers called the Employer Satisfaction Survey last year. But also the, the first year college, I hadn't fully appreciated the weight and breadth, breadth, breadth and importance of this, but if you're thinking about it, typically in universities, you're streamed when you start into a school or a faculty or an area. Here, while you do a degree, many different areas, 50, 60, 70 different areas, there is a first year college with 97 staff in which all of those disciplines are represented in one area, one entity, one umbrella, engineering, science, nursing, health, law, arts, you name it, sports science, whatever it is, it's represented in first year college, business, doesn't matter what the degree is. And so students create and are part of a group and a group dynamic, unlike any other. So recently, in fact, 25 participants from VU's first year college are going to be joining with classroom teachers to refine the art and craft of this as well in terms of high engagement learning and teaching. And you'll hear more about this experiment from the Dean of the College, Professor Smallridge, shortly. But we are going to build on those foundations and take them further. Indeed, just to give you a bit of an uh, insight tip, uh, in the Times Higher Education Journal in January, there'll be a feature article on the block model and how it's now being influenced, taken up and networked around the world in about 12 other universities globally. So watch that space. We'd love you to be part of it. But let's get back to teaching. I really love teaching. I still do it. I'm not uh, doing it as much as you, I know, but I certainly admire what you're doing. And the last two years, all of you have just balanced incredibly keeping your students safe, safe, allowing them to progress and you know, making things happen during COVID. It's been really incredible. And Avid Australia itself has supported people in all new ways. Imagine the digital switch that's happened so quickly. It's just phenomenal. And both Avid Australia and Avid Centre Digital XP were shortlisted for the 2020 Reimagine Education K-12 Awards, or the, it's sometimes called the, the Oscars of, of uh, higher ed or the, the Golden Lions of higher ed. It's clear recognition that Avid's program of high impact teaching and learning strategies are making a huge impact on the lives of young people Australia wide. I know that Claire and the, the team and the network, more than 70 schools nationally in Australia are doing a phenomenal job. We're so proud to be the Australian representative, if you like, of Avid and to take it further and farther and better into the future. So colleagues, I could go on, but I won't. It's actually time for you to hear from students and to hear from those who love teaching them. And equality for all students from whatever background is what we're about. We really think that is the future. That is the future of participation, of uplift, of really genuine curricular and pedagogical reform. It's at our heart, it's at VU's heart, and it's at the heart of AVID. So we're proud to be working together in partnership. Can I say this? Continue to have a wonderful learning experience. I myself look forward to getting trained in the AVID method myself before teaching in the block next year. Maybe in a year's time, I can come back and tell you even more about that personal experience. But in the meantime, season's greetings, congratulations. Thanks to Claire, thanks to everyone. And I look forward to hearing all about the results of this fantastic get together. Well done, thank you. Thank you so much, Adam. I'm just sorry you can't hear all the applause that would be rippling around if we were all on in one site together. Hopefully next year we'll be back at Footscray, Footscray College uh, in person and able to hear that. But your words are, are wonderful and inspiring for all of us. I've never had the privilege of working with a vice chancellor who would join up education from the very earliest years through to 
uh, the employability goal uh, and knowledge for knowledge's sake as well, not just about employability, but just learning for the sake of being good citizens. So we are thrilled to be uh, working with you and thank you very much for your support. And Claire, I should, should just say, I normally stay for conferences oh. and I love to. The only, only reason, and Claire, I would love to hear you, is that we have what's called our academic board meeting on at the moment, which is the final one of the year where all the senior academics get together and plan 2022. So if I don't go there, they'll probably think I don't care and I do. So as I said before, we 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 care and we act, so I better act and go and rejoin them. But that's the only reason, just to let you know. Thank you, no, we appreciate. Yeah. We know this is the most important meeting that you ever have to attend. So thank you for stepping out. Uh, hopefully they haven't made decisions you're not happy with in the meantime. So I'll find out. <laughs> exactly. okay. Thank and you so much. Best of luck, Claire, and I look forward to hearing more about your great career as well. Oh, we'll send you we'll send you the link so that you can hear Claire Bug Bugden's speech as well, so you won't miss out. Good, excellent. All the best. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you. And now it is my privilege and pleasure to introduce Claire Bugden, and she will tell you a little bit about her story. Thank you, Claire. Hi, my name is Claire Bugden. I'm in year nine and I go to Logan Lee State High School. I would like to start off by thanking everybody for being here and for inviting me to talk about AVID and how it inspires me. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Malala Yousafzai. I'm sure you've heard this quote at one time or another. I see this quote every time I walk through the English block and it's one quote that sticks with me to this day. Reading Malala's book back in year six made me realise how possible something is when you stick to it and work as hard as possible, even with challenges along the way. Whilst not undermining Malala's experiences with the Taliban, COVID has certainly provided some troubles that students and teachers have had to tackle. Melbourne has had the longest lockdown in the world and teachers and students have persisted and have been learning every day despite these difficulties. In Australia, we have had relatively easy access to, to learning and we sometimes take that for granted. Hopefully COVID will make people appreciate and recognize how lucky we are to have ways to learn even throughout a pandemic and to remain optimistic even when facing adversity, just like Malala. For example, COVID presented me with the opportunity to attend AVID PD days with the students from Victoria University, which made me realize how possible university actually is and how, if I work hard enough, I can succeed at anything in life. I've always dreamt of going to university since I was a little kid, but I'd never really thought about what university life was like. The avid days showed me that university is a reality and inspired me to work even harder to make sure that I reach that goal. Personally, in using the avid framework in school, it has made me realize how important it is to be organized for academic success and that I am learning the skills that I need so that when the time comes, I am ready for university. AVID has also challenged me to think outside the box with using Costa's House of Questions to ask more challenging questions to peers and help them think through answers instead of just being told the final solution. I believe that problem solving strategies are essential later in life and can be applied in any context. So it's important that we are learning these from a young age we are learning about them from an age as young as I am. These are skills that will serve me well, whether I choose to be an English teacher or a psychologist. Both are jobs that are similar for many obvious reasons. On that topic, I have developed a massive respect for teachers, especially throughout the past two years. I would like to make a special mention to two of my teachers, Miss Lee and Mr Coates. Thank you for believing in me and keeping me inspired through your funny jokes and for having high expectations. This pushes me to work harder to meet your standards as well as meeting my own aspirations. I know that it's the end of the year and teachers and students alike are tired. I would like to say thank you to all teachers who are attending today to hear me speak about AVID. I would also, on behalf of all the students at Logan Lee State High School and throughout Australia, make a special thank you to all teachers for working tirelessly throughout the year, helping students be the best they can be. As Malala famously said, one child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. Teachers truly do help make a difference in the world and I would like to show my appreciation. I would also like to give a special thanks to Victoria University for organizing these AVID days and allowing me to have the opportunity to talk to all of you about how AVID has inspired me. 
I would like to again thank you all for listening to my speech and I hope you have a wonderful conference and holiday that allows you to reconnect to those you love most, engage in personal interests, be inspired and inspire others, but most importantly, recharge in 2022. Thank you. Oh, Claire, that is such an inspiring talk. Thank you so much. I'm just so sorry you can't hear the applause that would be coming from you. And I would suspect a standing ovation from all the teachers that you have just honoured. Um, what I would like the audience to know is that Claire has prepared that speech in under a week. We actually had a different person, who young person, who was going to give our speech and then um, suddenly became unavailable to deliver our student keynote speech. And we normally give our student keynote speakers a couple of months to prepare and we rehearse a lot and we practice. Claire has pulled this speech together with the help of her wonderful teacher, Lauren Fletcher, in about a week. So I think you will all join with me to say, Claire, you are an inspiration for us. You represent the reason why we do the things that we do. And I'd like you to stay on now and have a chat with Professor Andrew Smoridge who has a deep interest in connecting the first year college that Adam spoke about um, with the school. And I think you'll be able to see the chat. I think there'll be teachers putting some comments in the chat to say thank you to you as well, Claire. So feel free to uh, let Claire know that you've got a, a round of applause virtually coming to you, Claire. But over to you, Professor Smallridge, tell us about first year college. Uh, thank you so much, Claire and Claire. CB2. <laughs> So, look, really, really well done, Claire uh, Bugden. I think that to be able to pull something like that together in a week is impressive. To be able to pull it together in a month is impressive. So we know that. And, and I think that your comments around teachers are very, very well founded. I, I would hope if anything good were to come out of COVID, it is that the general population understand the importance of teaching and the role that teachers do have in society. I think it becomes too easy to forget and to push responsibility off to teachers. And as we all know, blame them when things don't go right. And I think that particularly those people who have had to do homeschooling will understand that teaching is a real profession and it's a tough job. And I join with you in celebrating everything that teachers have done over the last two years. And we certainly hope that they come back to schools next year, uh, especially in Melbourne where we have. So Claire, I'm, I'm interested in the fact that you're in year nine and year nines often discover discussed as a, as a turning point in many ways. And I thought it was interesting that you picked up a year six book that you read. And year six is another turning point for students. And so I'd ask you how you feel you have transitioned from year six to year nine and what you're looking forward to transitioning into senior school next year? Well, in year six, I wasn't as hardworking as I was. I kind of took things as they went, went with the flow. But like now in year nine, I've realized that if I want to do what I want to do in the future, then I'm going to have to work a lot harder and be dedicated to what I want to do. So yeah, that's kind of my turning point in year nine. It's just learning that I have to be dedicated to what I want to do and working harder to ensure I achieve success. What do you think will be the key points that will enable you to achieve your success as you take that next step? And the reason I'm asking is because obviously as first year college, we're interested in what the next steps are once you finish in secondary school. So what do you think are the key things that you will need as you take that next step in your educational journey? Well, um, obviously we've started using the AVID framework in school. And the um, focus note taking is something that really helps me be organized with my notes and the cue section, which I use to ask questions about my work so I can come back and reflect on the work I've done. That really helps me organize my notes and get everything sorted. And like the help of teachers will be really helpful as well. And like you need people to inspire you and you need good teachers to help you along the way. As um, 
Claire Brown was saying earlier. She was talking about how her, she had a PhD and how it, she needed the help of a lot of people and like mentors helped her out along the way. So it's awesome to see that there are a lot of people that can help me like do what I want to do in the future. I think if I can paraphrase that a little bit, Claire, I, I would think that what you need is a level of consistency. Mm -hmm. So you need to feel that the jump is as small as possible. Yeah. So you don't want suddenly to feel that year 10 is a huge difference from year nine. In the same way that you probably didn't want year seven to feel a big difference from year six. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the beauties of Abbott is that does provide you with the framework that makes each of those steps that you take, even though educationally they may be big steps, they feel like smaller steps. And certainly that's the philosophy we've tried, if I can talk about first year college briefly, is that we've tried to make that step from secondary school into university as small as possible. Because that's seen and I and I loved your comment that you know you'd always thought about going to university but it felt different bigger uh, scarier and and I think that all the way through we've got to look at how we can help students transition from primary school to secondary school to work to TAFE to university to wherever it is and then we've got to help them transition back because once you've finished secondary school, it's not the end of learning. Once you get a job, it's not the end. So we've got to think about how we do these sorts of transitions and move backwards and forwards. And the way we can do that is to make the steps as small as possible so that you can focus on how you're going to need hard to work harder, how you're going to need to be focused, how you're going to rely on the support of teachers to get you there. But it was all not about you feeling uncomfortable. You, I would say, and please confirm, do you feel comfortable going next year and aiming for your senior years? Yes, I do. Yeah. So you're not, it's not, an, it's a step up because of the work that you know is going to be involved, but you're comfortable in the fact that you know that you can do it. And so I would think that's a really important lesson. It's about providing that confidence to our students. It's about saying that we'll put you in an environment where we know you're gonna to have to work hard. We know we will put high expectations on you, but we'll create an environment that will enable you to succeed and will enable you to reach your potential in whatever it is that you're doing. And there are 25 plus first year college staff here undertaking the AVID Institute. AVID has been critical to the first year college since we started four years ago. And the partnership with Claire and AVID has been overly important in, and critical, I would say, in ensuring the success of our students. And one of the reasons that we ask our staff, in some cases we tell, our staff to attend these AVID Institutes is because if we want to make the step from university, from school to university as small as possible and as easy as possible for you, then we have to work with the schools. We've got to understand what it is that you've been doing so that we can help you transition from what you're used to to what you need to be. In the same way, Claire, you need to learn the difference between being a year nine student and a year 10 student. We have to teach students the difference between being a secondary school student and a university student. And that's what the first year college is about. And that's why our staff are here so that we can bring that gap closer together and that we can create university school partnerships so that we can make that as seamless a transition as possible. So that students like yourself, Claire, who obviously have an enormous amount of potential dreams, hopes, we can make them realities. And I think that the more we can connect schools and universities together, the more we're going to be able to enable people like yourself to reach those dreams and go there. So look, really well done, Claire, really impressed. I 
look forward to following your educational and future careers. And if you become a psychologist or an English teacher, then all the very best for you. The two roles that are critical in society today and moving forwards and will be a great example of how the youth of today can be the leaders of tomorrow and create the society that you and your fellow students all deserve. So well done, Claire, thank you. Well done to the other Claire for inviting me along. Thank you. And for all your support that Abbott has given us over the years at First Year College, we really couldn't do what we do without the program that we have there. So thank you and all the very best, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, people throw the, the word uh, visionary leader around a lot at the moment, but in Andrew Smallridge, we really do have a visionary leader. What Andrew has created with his colleagues in first year college has not been done anywhere in Australia or probably the world before, bringing all the subjects together. And the focus of first year college is not teaching your discipline, it's teaching students. And that's why those first year college facilitators are at Summer Institute Digital XP with you, and they're very keen to learn alongside you. So if you would like to talk further with Andrew about the possibility of connecting your school, and if COVID's done anything for us, it's given us the opportunity to connect our schools virtually as well as in person. Um, so if you would like to pursue those opportunities to connect with First Year College in some way, having First Year College uh, academics working alongside your teachers, your students, then we welcome those suggestions. We really are into a co-design model and we're open to all sorts of possibilities of working with our added schools. So please contact us and let us know what you would like. And we will take a leaf out of Claire Bugden's book and have a growth mindset and make all things possible. So thank you for that. Uh, Claire, I can't thank you enough again for stepping in and doing such a wonderful speech. Um, Andrew, thank you so much for coming alongside us. The privilege of working with First Year College is ours. Uh, I completely admire what you are doing to shake up the tertiary sector and uh, it's a privilege to work with you. I would like to thank everybody uh, who is here today, all the teachers who are exhausted, um, particularly teachers in New South Wales and Victoria. It's been a tough two years and yet still you're here online. I know there's a lot of teachers who never wanna see an online classroom ever again. And to have three days of professional learning online is a big ask. But such is the quality of the professional learning with our US colleagues beaming in uh, and our Australian staff developers teaming. How could you not take that opportunity? So thank you for being here uh, and to your leadership for allowing you to come for three days. I want to thank our US staff developers. They will end up having a, a 20 hour day. So they've already worked a full day at school. They're now coming in to work with us for a day. Um, so we know that Summer Institute is so much better when it's a partnership of our US staff developers working alongside our Australian staff developers. So thank you for coming and being part of this. To our Australian staff developers who have taken on a huge extra workload um, to be staff developers and deliver these three days of professional learning in under 10 weeks. That's been a huge ask and yet you've done it with good humour and, um, and a commitment to raising the quality of teaching and learning across Australia for young people like Claire, who continue to inspire us. So thank you to the Australian staff developers. I have to thank the Australian um, AVID team. There's only 10 of us and we don't all work full-time on AVID. We have put this digital XP together in under 10 weeks. We normally take six months to plan a summer institute and we thought about not doing one, but we couldn't let you down. We knew we had to push ourselves and deliver Summer Institute, even if it was the digital XP. So I'm getting all sorts of messages from the staff developers saying they are ready to rock and they are ready to welcome you into your community of practice. Um, and before I let you go, I do want to acknowledge Claire and, and her teacher, Lauren Fletcher, again, for being here and, and giving us the reason for why we do what we do. Thank you. I do just want to end on a, a sombre note to say that our hearts are with our Central Coast colleagues, um, our 2018 keynote speaker who touched our hearts, uh, Logan Lasado, is missing. And we are hoping that there will be good news and he will be delivered back to us safely. Um, but know that 
that we have Logan in our hearts as well. He's a critical member of the Australian Avid family and we're thinking of you Central Coast and we know how difficult this time will be. So thank you for being here. Have a wonderful three days. We're doing this for the students, for the Claire Bugdens of the world. Thank you for inspiring us. Andrew, thank you for working alongside us. Have a great three days. Uh, and you have 15 minutes until you are joining into your community of practice.